Welcome, friends, to a final episode of my Road to Class B chess series on YouTube. Um, a lot of you guys have been here watching and supporting my journey, and today marks a historic day. Um, if you guys haven't seen my last video, I did reach my goal of Class B, and I um, this video is just going to kind of do a recap of the year um, and maybe and it's a little over a year but um, and discuss what I found to be helpful for those of you that are trying to improve and um, go over what it looked like to um, start uh, come back to chess um, have the lows and the highs and then try to get yourself um, higher rating so let's get into it. Um, first thing I want to do, let's switch over to this screen here. And here is my MSA form, my member services area for my USCF. And as you can see, um, I am recording this on September 26th, 2023. And as of 10 1, so in a couple of days, uh, less than a week, uh, my published rating will be 1612. So if we take a look at our tournament history and we scroll back to when I started, and we can see I returned back to chess in 2022. This was the first tournament I completed. So I started in June. Uh, yeah, June 22nd. June of 2022. So we're a little over a year past when I came back and we can take a look at my trend here um, so by the time that this publishes which is going to be almost one year from then I was 1344 so which is pretty amazing um, I started at about 1450 ish and 1427 it looks like and I draw. I, I gained a few points, and then I dropped way down. Um, this was me stabilizing to where my current chess ability was at the time. And a little background behind that: for the past ten years before that, um, as you can see, 2011, 2022 is the last time I played over the board. Um, I was raising two young children. Uh, I got married. Uh, my wife and I bought a house. We had a lot of life events happen, so chess wasn't really something that was something that I could do. Um, but then I decided after the pandemic hit that um, I wanted to get back into chess. I started studying a little bit more, and really the only thing that I was doing for the past 10 years was playing daily games on chess.com. Um, so that was how I was staying at least engaged with chess. So I would have 7 to 14 days to move, and I would at least be able to play on my phone, you know, um, and kind of keep things uh, fresh for me. So I decided to come back. Our club reopened in June of 2022. So right when I was deciding to come back, they decided to come back to over the board after the pandemic, and I joined. Um, so let's scroll back and if we go back here and take a look at the actual history graph um, We can kind of see 2011. I have this big flat line. That's just because I haven't played um, And then my first tournament back I was in the 14 mid 1400s I dropped way down to I lost a hundred points and now I've had this steep spike to where I'm at right now, which is 1612 and um, you can see where I've actually put time into chess. So when I started in 1999, um, I got my first over the, this is my provisional rating after my first tournament was 1080. And then um, I think I played in 2002 um, and I spiked up 2003, 2004-ish. And I played a couple of games those years. Um, and I jumped up to about 1250 or so. Um, and then 2006, um, when I met my, um, 2007, 2008, um, 2009, I met my wife and I started, um, 
playing with my sons. And I had played a few games in 2006, 2007, which had me shoot up to the mid 1400s. And then I was pretty static for a little while. And then I decided I wanted to teach my young boys uh, who are now adults um, to play chess. So I came back to the club and I had this kind of small stint in 2010, 2011, which I wasn't very serious. It was more to get my my younger boys, my twins um, involved in chess. And I took them to a couple scholastic tournaments. I stayed pretty stagnant. I stayed in the mid 1400s. And then chess kind of fell off for us as they were getting older and getting into sports and high school and things like that. And then over the last 10 years, all I did was play daily chess. That's what this big green line is. This is all daily chess. I didn't do anything. I didn't come to over the board games. And then that's kind of my journey over the last um, couple of decades. So I was a little bit um, into chess or stabilizing. I played a little bit and had a steep spike where I did study a little bit. I wasn't very serious at this time, but this is actually the first real first time that I've actually put some serious study and structure around what I'm doing in chess. Um, And it's paid off. You know, I've put on a lot of time, which is nice. Uh, the other thing that I started was a YouTube channel, which a lot of you guys have seen. And uh, my first video was published on June 24th, um, shortly after I came back to chess. And we were, this was talking about my return, and we've had a number of videos. And this kind of documents my whole journey. And, you know, I get some good views here and there, and we're doing okay. And um, I feel pretty good about that. Uh, I, I had a goal of starting a YouTube channel and building. Uh, a chess following and trying to help people get better at chess and hopefully I've done that and with looking at some of the views of some of those videos and uh, some of the likes and comments uh, everybody that has watched has been pretty supportive and I hope that I've helped a few people along the way and I have I think about 40 some videos Um, I've calculated it reached since I started this journey it took 41 games for me to go from 1344 all the way up to 1612 so almost a 300 point gain in a little over a year um, or about a year so this has been a really tremendous progress which has been really nice um, so I really can't complain too much the other goal that I had was I wanted to uh, start getting a USCF correspondence rating because I, en- I really enjoy daily chess I like spending time at the board and diving deep into a position. Um, when I came back to chess, I had a lot of problems with time trouble, which I've since solved. But um, I could sit and think on a position for a lot of time. You know, I've got a chess board over here, and I I would put it up on the board, and I would just sit and stare at them and look for lines and look for ideas. And um, I actually did accomplish that. So I do now have a segre, or a, an actual... 1595 USCF correspondence rating and I'm in the middle of a USCF um, I play on the International Chess Correspondence Federation server the ICCF uh, for those of you that are f- not familiar or International Correspondence Chess Federation so you can play on this website here um, and I'm actually in the middle of a tournament right now where I'm playing a number of games at the same time. So as you can see, I've got a number of days to move. So that was another goal that I had, which was to establish myself in the correspondence chess arena as well. And it seems as though I've I've solved that. And um, I've been playing a number of tournaments. I think this is number, this is my fourth tournament. Um, I've actually won all three that I entered so far, so hopefully I can win my fourth in a row, which would be pretty cool. But what was nice about this last tournament is I actually went 6-0. I won every single game, which was um, a pretty cool uh, accomplishment. And the USCF sent me a certificate, which was amazing, um, which is really cool. Uh, Let's go back here. Um, So if we go back and take a look at our tournament history, I've played a number of tournaments um, between then. And, and now, so I don't know exactly how many it is, but um, I'm over 50 tournaments now. Now that's my total. But I don't know exactly what I've played for the year, but it's been a fair number. Um, let's see. Uh, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. About 13 or so. 
uh, which is really nice. Uh, the other cool thing, if we go back here, um, we can actually show our game statistics. And this will show you what we did by the year um, if we search. So for the year, um, for 2023, I played 40 games. Um, that's as of today. Um, this obviously overlaps from 2022 for my Road to Class B series, but for this year alone, I've played 40 games, which is more than I've played in any year, as you can see, and it breaks it down by year, which is really nice. So um, peak rating is 1612, and I have, a uh, I have a plus score. We're at over 50%, which is pretty amazing. Um, so right now for the year, I am 17, 10, and 13. Um, and if we click on 2023, it'll actually show us every single tournament that we've played um, and all of the people that we've played, uh, which is rather amazing. And then it shows you every single result um, as you go, which is really cool. There's a lot of cool stats on the U.S. Chess Federation uh, website, which is, is pretty cool. And then it breaks down the last 12 months on who you've played. So... This is a rolling 12 months, just so you know. So right now we're in September. So this goes back to September of 2022. And this shows every single game that I've actually played. And I'm, for the year, um, year to date, I'm 54%, uh, percent, which is pretty amazing. Um, 21, 15, and 16. So um, we're getting more than a third or two thirds of our um, play is uh, with wins and draws, which is pretty amazing. Uh, I feel as though I've had a lot of improvement, which is really nice. Uh, the other interesting thing is that as we scroll down, I've reached the top 150 uh, players in Wisconsin. Uh, where am I at here? Um, 1593 right now. It, it won't post until October where I'll jump up. So uh, I'll actually jump up a few spots. I'll be in the top 140 um, if I jump up to 1610 if these stay relatively the same, which to me is pretty, that's pretty remarkable. I'm um, rather uh, impressed by that. And it actually shows my uh, rankings in the nation and in Wisconsin. So uh, actually it shows me at 134 out of 729. So I think it doesn't take into account some scholastic things, but I really can't remember. But I'm in the top 80%, um, and I'm approaching the top 90% in the nation. So, um, and I feel as though I'm a relatively okay player. I don't, I don't think I'm really that strong of a player yet. Um, I'm on my way, and 1600 puts you up pretty high, um, which is actually kind of surprising to me. Um, so, yeah, there's my tournament history. Uh, there's one other thing that I saw that was a, I found interesting under more. Ah, yeah, my there's a milestones tab which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, this year I've gained two milestones, uh, where I got 50 regular rated games, and then on my last tournament I actually reached the third category title. Um, I don't think this really matters much in the title <clears throat> arena. But um, if we scroll down, yeah. So I've actually reached titles, uh, the title space in um, the USCF, which is kind of interesting. So as you can see all the titles here, excuse me. Norms and titles. So um, <clears throat> I've reached the third category, which is a performance level <clears throat> of over... 1400 um so hopefully soon i'll probably reach the next one which is second category that one really doesn't matter um this is a little out of date because nobody really sees a candidate master at 2000 this is expert level but maybe they actually give you that title if you reach 2000 uh because you are a candidate master which means you're on your way to master which I think most of us are chasing, which is this uh, ever elusive 2200 um, to become a life master. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, lots of cool stats on this website. If you are getting into chess, this is a really nice, uh, interesting site to explore. So I urge you to take a look at that. Um, 
The other thing that I would like to discuss, we'll just kind of leave it on this screen here and actually we'll go back to my full face, is what did I do and what have I learned to go from 1344? Um, what was my journey and what did I do to reach that and gain 300 points in a year? Well, I have a list here and we'll talk about it. So what, the first thing that I want to talk about is analyzing your games uh, and your losses. It's really important to take a look at um, your games that you played um, within a, a few days up to a week or two from the time that you actually played the game. Now, I do it within a month because of just my schedule and my time. So what I do is I play four games and then I stream the analysis of all four of those games and I go over those. Um, and what I do in those games is I go through and I try to find any weaknesses or mistakes that I've made. And any major mistakes or blunders that I've made, I actually, uh, let's go back to full screen here, is I put them in my own custom chessable course. Um, I have re since reset this, so that's why they look small. But I've got 12 variations in here, and what you can do is you can create your own course, and then you can look at your chapters, and you can add all of your mistakes. So for instance, if we go into this one and take a look here, I made a mistake here in one of my games where I played in English. And I played, um, you know, I put in some information and they played bishop e6. And my mistake was I played a different move here. Um, when you see the knights where I discussed right here, uh, the move is d5. Whoops, I apologize. So. Uh, we play d4, uh, bishop has to move, and then b4, and you get to fork the pieces. And I made this mistake uh, in a game that I played uh, late last year in 2022. So what I did was I put this in a in a chessable course, and I used chessable to go to this course, and now I cycle it like it's my own private course and I go through the space repetition. You know what's interesting about this? I saw this position three more times after I did this and you know what? I never made that mistake again. I played d4, they moved their bishop, I played d5 and I won the piece and ended up winning all three, three or four of those games that this came up after I made this mistake. So I really urge you to analyze your games, find out where your mistakes are, and then put them into a chessable course and repeat those mistakes. Um, if you guys would like to see a video on how to do that, um, I'll put together some instructions and we'll put a video, leave a comment down below, and um, maybe I can get a video where how you can create your own use, uh, chessable course and learn from those mistakes. All right, let's go back to full face here. And all right, um, the next thing that I think is really important is um, I'm part of the chess comp chess punks community on twitter and i've also joined a i have a discord for those of you that are interested click on my social links you can join from the uh, links of this video and you can find my discord join a community a chess community where you can submit your game for analysis and get discussion about it um, people can give you lots of tips they can come up with different ideas go over those ideas um, I'm gonna show a little bit of secrets here, um, actually. So, let's go back here. Um, I have a few people that I study with that are from my local club in my local area. And let's go to shared games room. This is old, so I'm not sharing anything. But, so this is a shared group between me and a few members. I'm actually not gonna share them because I, don't, I think that's rude. Um, but you can see some of the games that are in here. You can kind of get an idea of who the members are. So I have a few people in my chess community, in my local community, that we all together jo joined a Discord. We're in the same Discord together. And we submit our games to each other, and then we go through them. And um, let's take a look at one of my games. So this is a game I played with Greg Kravitz, where I put in some of my notes. We got through the game, and then, um, you know... I played some moves and we got through a game and then we were able to comment on our games. We put notes in for each other and we'd look at these ideas and try to figure things out. I think this is a really strong way to help you improve 
on those mistakes. You can find these mistakes, add them to the Chesilbo course, discuss these things, especially um, the group that I'm in that I have a community with, all of the people in my group were higher rated than me. And that's extremely uh, valuable. I, I value that really highly, um, mainly because I've learned a lot from that entire group of um, people. So kudos to them and a huge shout out to all of them who have been part of my chess journey to help me improve, which has been really extremely um, uh, helpful in my uh, improvement. Uh, number three, the now none of these are in any particular order. These are just things that I, I found in my journey that I thought were worth talking about. Tactics, 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 tactics. Um, there's a saying, 99% of chess is tactics. I don't believe that's true, but I believe what they're really trying to allude to when they're saying that is that you need to spend a lot of time on tactics and it needs to be a, a, a pillar of your chess training and study. You should be working on tactics every day. For 15 to 30 minutes, if you can do more, you're gonna see greater improvement. The more tactics you do, the faster that you solve making blunders, dropping pieces, um, and you start causing blunders and causing players to drop pieces, the faster that you're gonna rise. And that all comes from tactics. Um, until you're starting to drop not drop pieces, tactics is going to be paramount. I'm not even close to level 2000 now, but I can tell that tactics are, and even Evan, um, one of my mentors in chess who is uh, trying to reach master right now and has been routinely over 2100 on a number of occasions um, and uh, is on his way to 2200 probably before the end of the year, maybe early 2024 he's working on tactics every day and you can tell that it's just um it's extremely important and helpful so make sure tactics are are something you're working on every day and when i talk about that and i'll go deeper into this in another particular uh, episode but um you need curated tactics courses like the woodpecker method or other tactics courses you find on chessable or books um, books like uh, the art of checkmate um, and things like that uh, these are very helpful. You can do puzzles on chess.com and Lee Chess, but they will be helpful. But the problem is, is you're not getting a repetition like you do with Chessable and space repetition, and I believe that's really important. Okay, um, next one, number four. Uh, limit your bullet and blitz play. Uh, I think that I think bullet and blitz can be helpful when you're learning an opening but you should only care about the results of the game in terms of how you did in the opening and how you were when you came out of the opening going into the middle of the game. If you are nailing all your lines and doing everything, I think that's a perfect way to use blitz and bullet to help drill lines. Um, I don't think it's a really good way to improve your chess. Actually, I believe it's a way to probably most likely hurt your chess until you are probably getting close to my level of 1600 or above that where you can start using it as a tool. Now, with that being said, if you really wanna become good at blitz, you have to play blitz. So then you should be focusing and playing a lot of blitz. But if you're looking to improve at chess, focusing and playing blitz and bullet is not the way, the quickest way to improve at chess. You need to play slower time controls, analyze your games, uh, have criticism on those games with your community and learn from all those mistakes. That's the quickest way. Um, number four, take breaks. Uh, it's really easy to get burnout. Uh, chess burnout is a thing, uh, and it, it's the same in any hobby. Uh, it's easy to get burned out, and if you're not taking breaks, um, it's hard. I just took a break, and now I'm returning. I took a break between the time that I actually completed my last Road to Class B game and making this video because I was burned out by chess with how much studying I was doing. So I actually took almost a three full weeks off where I didn't play any chess online. I didn't do any study. I didn't do anything related to watching chess or entertainment of chess. I cut it out completely and I just focused on some other stuff. And you know what? Now I'm back and I'm invigorated and I feel like I'm ready to take on the world, the chess world. Let's go. I'm excited. So take breaks and a break could be anywhere from a day or two to a couple of weeks to maybe even a couple of months depending on how burned out you are so um 
you, you know yourself best, so use your best judgment when it comes to chest burnout. Um, the most important thing that I can say, number six, um, so this would be obviously number one in my book, is consistency is key. Um, you have to show up every day, even if you don't want to. Uh, if you really seriously want to meet your chess goals and chess improvement, um, consistency, you have to show up and you have to do chess every day, whether or not that's 15 minutes to 30 minutes to an hour to two hours, whatever your time frame is, you got to do, you got to put in the work. If you're not putting in the work, you're not going to get better. Um, you have to be putting in time. Um, and I can tell you there's a lot of days in the last year where I didn't want to study at all. But I forced myself to just get in. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do five minutes. I'm going to just get started. I don't want to. And then I ended up studying for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour or whatever. And I was happy that I did it because at the end I was like, oh, wow, I was only going to study for five, 10 minutes, but I got into it and then I, I actually did the work. So if you can commit yourself to getting started every day and actually do a little bit, you're going to find that chess study will just happen. Um, yeah, are you going to have to cut out some things like Netflix and um, sitting on the couch and being lazy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody wants to do that stuff. But if you really want to meet your goals, consistency is key, 100%. And then the most important thing that's probably even more important than consistency, I think, is having fun. If you're not having fun and you're not enjoying the journey, um, why do it, right? So... Uh, yeah, it's great to have goals. It's great to be like, yeah, I want to be this X rating by this time. But don't focus on that. Set the goal and then make your goals process-based and production-based. Be like, I'm going to study 25 tactics today. I'm going to study endgame puzzles today. Uh, I'm going to read one chapter of a book. I'm going to study one master game. Make those your goals. And then when you reach those goals, you're like, all right, now, now I can... Let's set a new one. I'm going to I'm going to do two master goals. I'm going to do 25. I'm going to do an hour of puzzles today. Whatever it might be, focus on that as your as your goals because if you follow those and you reach all those goals, um, you will reach um, the 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 main goal, the rating goal that you're looking for. Uh, there's one more thing that I want to show. I've actually revamped my training. Um, and I'm going to share it. I'm not I'm not going to be I'm not going to hide from what I'm doing. It's not a secret. Um, I'm pretty calculated. Uh, you can see here's my break time. Um, and actually all of this was, most of September was break time. I just didn't mark it off. There was a few times in there I did some chess, but I was I was on a full break pretty much since the beginning of September. And it's been like three weeks. So really all of this is supposed to be marked as blue for me. Um, because I didn't really, I did a couple things and I was really confused. So um, this is my new chess study schedule. This is what I have. And here's my goals. And if you look, all of my goals are not related to the, they're related to the rating that I want, which is now Road to Class A, um, 1800. Um, but it's, you know, these are my goals for the rest of the year, which is solidify, solidify my thought process, analyze and annotate 12 of my losses. I've actually started this. Um, here, I have a list. Here's my last 12 losses. I put them in a spreadsheet. Um, I marked where my losses were, who I was playing, when I played the game, what opening there was, sequences, my mistakes, the number of mistakes, and the number of mistakes that I made in the game. Um, and I put them in this big list. And I got all of this from Pump Up Your Rating, which is a book by Axel Smith. And you can see, I can already see a pattern. So I've already started my analyze 12 games. I've done two of them already, as you could see. Um, but I've added only two games that I've already seen that there's a, there's a trend. I've got a problem with pawn breaks. I got a problem with tactics and I got a problem with my thinking. Those should be my three areas of study moving forward. And I can guarantee that through the next 12, 10 or 12 games that I go through, I'm going to add more numbers to all of these categories and that's where I should be putting my focus. Um, and that I'm getting really regimented with what I should be doing. So create yourself a list. You can see mine. If you don't, if chess isn't that important to you, obviously this is way too much and you'd be like, dude, I can't do all this. Um, then 
you know, th you don't have to be as detailed as me. I need lists. I need stuff like this. Um, all of these categories mean something, and this is my checklist for the day. Uh, red means I have to do it. Um, red, orange means that I should do it. And the extras um, are if I have more gas in the tank and I want to do more. Um, so, yeah, um, this is what I'm doing. And it, it's been really helpful. So I hope all of that's been helpful to you. Um, if you took something from this video and you want to see other videos out of it, you want to see how to analyze your games, you want to see how to make a chessable course, you want to see what tactics courses I'm doing, you like to... Um, know how I structure my breaks. You'd like to know how and uh, how I've been so consistent. I will do more videos about all of that stuff. Um, this video is a little bit over 30 minutes. I know it's a longer video, but if you stayed to the end, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you for helping me with my journey. It's been extremely helpful. And here's to the next um, 50 games. Um, hopefully, maybe it'll go faster than 50 games, but uh, let's see what it takes to get to Class A. So um, I hope that you all join me in the next adventure and we start the new road to Class A uh, soon. So stay tuned for that. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave comments. Join the Discord if you want to join the discussion and community. And let's all see if we can reach more chess goals together. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you have a great day, and I hope that you guys reach all of your chess goals. Take care.